blessings to you. Welcome to your program, Faith of Affair. How are you doing today? Wow, what a joyful, joyful, joyful time to be alive, to be in God's presence, and to have hope in pursuing our new season. I'm just glad that you are connecting on this platform, and I know that this day is going to be a special, special, special day. I trust that God is going to touch you in special ways. I am trusting God to interrupt and intercept your life and bring necessary changes in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the voice of God that there is a closure to some seasons in your life and there's an opening of another season. Every season that has brought you pain, that has brought you anguish and brought you sorrow. I'm hearing the voice of God. That season is closed now. In the name of Jesus, that season of pain is closed now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, I declare it by the authority in the name of Jesus that every season that has brought you low, that has brought you down, that has brought you pain. Today, Jehovah God closes that season now, brings an end to it now. A new season opens up for you. This is a new day for you. This is a new era for you. Today is the dawn of a new day. Enter into your season of peace. Enter into your season of joy. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Join me to celebrate Jehovah God. Father, we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your loving kindness. We celebrate your faithfulness over us, over this platform, for the lives you are changing, for the transformations you are bringing to us daily. Blessed, blessed, blessed be your name. Let us give thanks to God globally, but for God. The thoughts of the enemy for the entire world is so bad. Bet for God, for his intervention. Somebody may say things are bad now. Thank God, if not for God, it will have been worse. Zero Basaya, Father, we give you praise for your mighty hands that is restraining evil, for your hands restraining darkness. Father, we thank you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. Revelation eleven fifteen. He said, "The kingdom of His word of this word have become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and He will reign forever and ever." Saints of God, we decree today that the kingdom of this word, Zerubasa, is subject, is under the control, is under the authority of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Today, by the authority of God's word, we superimpose the kingdom of Jesus over the kingdom of this world. In the name of Jesus, every system, every authority over this world, we superimpose the authority of Jesus over it in the mighty name of Jesus. Reko Shalibara. Anyone going for any interview this week, May God go with you. May you be met with favor. In the name of Jesus. May you be met with favor. In the name of Jesus. That panic attack in your dream. Today it is canceled. Whatever evil intent. Unpleasant intent. Of that panic attack. That came in your dream. The Bible says. I will not be afraid of the terror of night, the arrow that wastes in the new day. Today, every plan and action of the terror of the night against you, that person, is canceled in the name of Jesus. Let everyone raise up your voice today and say, Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come and say boldly, come and say, I say boldly of my Lord. He is my strength. He is my rock. 
He is my buckler. He is my protector. I shall fear no evil in the name of Jesus. This is the beginning of greater days, greater weeks, greater years for someone hearing me today. May the hand of the Lord be strong upon you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We give God praise for another day to be ministered to in the presence of God. This month we'll be looking at how to begin anew, how to start anew, how to embrace the newness that God has for us. And we said the beauty of life is whatever has happened to you or whatever is happening now, you can always begin again. Mazoyasa. He said, my enemy do not rejoice over me. Even though I fall, I shall arise again. The just man before seven times, he gets up. I see you getting up in this season. No matter the setback, this is your time for comeback. No matter the setback, may God give you a comeback. In the name of Jesus, no matter the setbacks you have suffered, I am praying for you today that my God, Jehovah himself, will give you a comeback for victory, a comeback for lifting, a comeback for turn around in the name of Jesus. Yes, you will come back. You will have experience a comeback for victory in that business. Zero massa. Yes, marital comeback. You are coming back stronger in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. God is telling me he's giving you and your child another chance to begin again. The relationship between you and your child has been sour, totally destroyed. There's another chance. You are planning to come together to talk. God said, take advantage of it. It's going to be the beginning of stronger bonding. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, greet each other on this platform. As we roll again in the world, like I said, we are continuing our ministration on embracing our new season. And today we want to minister on I refuse to lose hope. Say that. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. I refuse to lose hope. Amen. Your hope must shape your new season. It is your hope that shapes your new season. I am here to declare to you today, may God sharpen your hope. May God strengthen your hope. May God increase your hope. In the name of Jesus, every hope that has been dashed. Alo, bazi, anasu, koparaza. Ah, every expectation that has prolonged beyond normal. That has caused people's hope to be deemed and, 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 and be dampened. May God of heaven, may he sharpen your hope right now. In the name of Jesus, may your hope come alive. May your hope be strengthened in the mighty name of Jesus. Hope is the doorway to moving from one season to another. It is practically impossible for you to embrace your new season in the absence of hope. That is why I'm praying for somebody today. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. Your hope is coming alive. He said, is there hope for a tree when it is cut down? And he come back alive again. Yes. At the saint of the word. Haro Messiah. Job 14. By the breathing of the word into it. It comes back alive. Job 7 14. I see your hope coming back alive today. As the word of God is coming forth. As the word of God is coming forth. As the word of God is coming forth. Your hope is coming alive. What is regarded as being dead. Will come back alive. Ah, a dead tree that is cut down. You expect it to die. He said, but when you begin to pour the water at the sight of the word of water, which is the word of God, the truth will begin to come forth. It will begin to defy logics, defy human expectations. I don't know the area of your life that is regarded as being dead, hopeless, helpless. Today, by the word of God being sent forth to you. Your hope will come back alive. That dream will come back alive. That business will come back alive. In the mighty name of Jesus, that organ will come back alive. 
that tissue that is considered dead will come back alive in the name of Jesus. He said, can these bones live? He said, thou knowest, prophesy to them. By the word of the Lord, I prophesy to every hopeless, helpless situation. Hope again. Come back alive. Come back alive. In the name of Jesus, in the absence of hope, no new system can be experienced. It is impossible to grasp what God wants to do in your life. I am here to tell you God is about great things in your life. God is never done with you. God is not done. That's what the enemy always wants us to know. That it is over. God is finished with you. There is no more uh, uh, headway for you. But I'm here to tell you God has beautiful plans for you. And it is your hope that is the doorway. It is your hope that leads you. It is the hope you have in God that is your channel, that is your connectivity to the new things God has for you. Hosea 2.15, I will give her her vineyard from here and the value of Akko for a door of hope. The value of Akko or Akko means trouble. It means trouble. Amen. For the Israelites, Akko is synonymous to trouble, disaster, and loss. It was a valley of, whenever you mention that to the Israelites, it reminds them of disaster, loss, and, and, and trouble. A place of unspeakable failure. A place of shame. It is also a place, amen, but God says, in that valley of Echo, I will give you a door of hope. Your hope will become a door for you to get out. So it's also a place of fresh start. In the midst of trouble, hope is your doorway to your lifting. Hope is your doorway to your lifting. When you walk through the door of hope, you will embrace your new season. When you walk through the door of hope, trouble becomes testimonies. Zema kopasa. It is your doorway to singing and rejoicing. That is what Satan, that's why he wants to steal your hope. He wants to take away your hope. He wants you to become uh, uh, discouraged and down. And hopeless. But God wants you to be hopeful. Today, I don't know anybody who is in the valley of trouble, the valley of shame, the valley of disaster and loss. By your hope, you're getting out today. Aro Messiah, let your hope be a door for you to escape. Be a door for you to move from loss to gain. For you to move from troubles to testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I am asking God today, to hold your hands and move you into the realm of testimonies. In the name of Jesus, let your hope come alive. Let your hope begin to, to cry out for a new day. Ha! A hopeful man is never, is never, 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 never written off. No, 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 no. As long as there's hope, there is life. As long as there's hope, there is a way. I am praying as I'm speaking to you. May, may your hope begin to... To, to, to rumble inside of you. May, may divine hope begin to begin to, 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 to boil up and while up inside of you. In the name of Jesus, in his lifetime, David experienced several challenges. And at the same time, he experienced several victories. He experienced domestic problems. His children came against him. Some of his children betrayed him. He was betrayed by his uh, trusted friends, trusted friends. His workers betrayed him. Amen. Some of his leaders who were under him, the leaders under him, they betrayed him. His own son, amen, betrayed him. But despite the challenges, David enjoyed ceaseless victory. He fought 66 battles. He never lost any. Hallelujah. Why? He understood the power of hope. And he never allowed the challenges, amen, confronting him to hinder his season of rejoicing and hope and worship and celebration and the greatness of God. You see, David, every time, despite those things that came against him, despite the battles he fought, despite the betrayal, it's, you see David always, amen, singing to God, praising God, looking for season of joy, of rejoicing. He never allowed anything to steal his hope. In Psalm 42 verse 11, he said, my soul, why are you disquieted? Why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you downcast? Why are you, why are you discouraged? He said, put your hope in God. Wow. 
He knew how to speak to his spirit to have hope instead of going down, instead of being disquieted, instead of being discouraged. Today I pray for you. Mazoya, but you need to speak to yourself. Come and say, in the name of Jesus, I speak to my soul. I speak to my spirit. Hope in God. Hope in God. Put your hope in God. In the name of Jesus. Come and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke hopelessness in my life. I reject hopelessness in my life. I embrace divine hope. In the name of Jesus, hope in God and wait expectantly for him. That's the way AMPC put that Psalm 42, verse 11. He said, my soul, my inner self, why should you mourn over me? Oh, Shayaba. Ah, are you mourning over anything right now? It may mourn, mourn. Why should you mourn? Not mourn, not M-O-U-R-N, M-O-A-N. Why should you mourn? It may, you know what it means when, you're, when your inner spirit is mourning. It's, it's, it's in anguish. It's agonizing. Is is contemplating uh, hopelessness. So he said, "My inner self, why should you?" He said, "Why should you mourn over me?" Can you see? And be disquieted within me. Hope in God and wait expectantly. There are times you need to speak over yourself. I said, "My spirit, get up, get up, get up! Come on! I need somebody to tell your spirit. Say, get up, get up! No morning." Kaleba, don't be disquieted. Let him put your hope in God. Hallelujah. And wait expectantly for the turnaround. I see a turnaround coming upon you. I see a turnaround coming. Yes, yes, there's something big that God is about to bring to your life. And that's why you have, your, your hope is being attacked. The greater the next level God has for you, the greater the attack of the enemy. Today, by the authority in the name of Jesus, you will not lose hope. You will not give up. You will not cave in. In the name of Jesus, may your hope be strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God fortify you inwardly and outwardly. In the name of Jesus, one of these periods of challenges in the life of David was in First Samuel chapter thirty. Amen. He went to fight a battle with his men, but before on returning, enemies invaded the entire town. In first Samuel 30, they took their wives, they took their children, they burned out the entire city. It was meant to be a season of sorrow, of loss, of grief, of crying, of mourning, and weeping for David and his men. Matter of fact, they wept for a time until David, in verse 6, hallelujah, he encouraged himself. He said, uh -uh. the Bible says he encouraged himself, he strengthened himself. Hallelujah. That's another word for hope. That means you and I, we have the capacity to build up our hope. We have the capacity to strengthen our hope, to strengthen our hope. Amen. Time of total loss of hope. But David encouraged himself in the Lord is God. Oh, that is what you need to do today. You need to encourage yourself. You need to build courage. You need to build courage in the face of, of fear. In the face of whatever is, is, is standing in the face. Amen. Inwardly, you'll be hearing the voice. It is over. You can come out. You can make it. But at the same time, you can rise up. I say, I put my trust in God. My heart, my soul, rise up. Embrace the plan of God. We saw how David, amen, did what he loved doing. He never allowed his situation or people to steal his hope. What is it that has been stealing your hope? That's what I'm here to tell you today. Never, 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 never allow anything, anyone, any situation to steal your hope. Come on, say in the name of Jesus, I will never allow anything or anyone to steal my hope. Come on, say in the name of Jesus, I will never lose hope in God in the name of Jesus. The catalyst that powered the engine of David's life was his living hope. In his living God. Hallelujah. It was the living hope that David had that powered his life. We saw so many instances. In Psalm 27, David said, Even when a troop, a host of enemies, encamped against him. Hallelujah. Look at it. He said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Mazoya Baya. There are times you need to declare that in the face of fear and test situation. God is my light. 
He is my salvation. He is my protector. He is my guide. He is my sustainer. Whom shall I fear? I cannot fear sickness. I cannot fear Satan. I cannot fear the system of this world. I cannot fear myself. I cannot fear people. Why? Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. He said, even when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, he said, they will stumble and fall. That's a man of hope. That's a man who will not lose hope. That's a woman who will not lose hope. I don't know what is coming against you now. I don't know what has a camp brand against you now, wanting to swallow you. I want you to look at those things in the face. Amen. That's the way you, 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 you build your hope. He says, God is my light. He is my salvation. He is my protector. He is my restorer. He is my sustainer. He is my preserver. He is my, he is my protector. I, who shall I fear? That's a big question. Who shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Nobody except God. I refuse to fear you, Satan. I need somebody to say that. I refuse to fear adverse situation. I refuse today to fear you situations and circumstances. Why? Because that Lord, Jehovah God, is my light. He is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Nobody. Even when enemy comes, I want you to declare today, whatever is coming against you, whatever is camping around you to swallow you up, I declare today, they will fall, they will stumble, they will fall, they will stumble, they will fall, they will stumble, they will fall, they will stumble. In verse 3, he said, though a host a camp against me, my heart shall not fail. That is how to never allow your hope to be stolen. Though a host... Host means multitudes of army. Even though when they come, I shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me. How many of you now, maybe you're having some warfare in your place of work. Maybe you're having warfare over your child. Look at what the hopeful man says. Even though he hope, I mean war shall arise. Hallelujah. He said, in this will I be confident. Hallelujah. There must be a confidence. There must, you must be confident of this fact. Amen. That you desire God. That God is for you. That God is with you. Hallelujah. Verse 5. He said, for in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. Can you see that? There is a place in God. There is a place of protection. There is a place of preservation. There is a place in God where God said to the enemy, this is it. This is your boundary. You are not going to cross here. I will not permit you. will not allow you to cross here because I. this one is among those I died for. This one is my child. Is the apple of my eyes. There is a place in God. And that's why you need to put yourself in that place. Amen. There is a place. Zero basakata. Ah, a place of protection, a place of preservation. That is the place where you dwell in the name of Jesus. For any time of trouble will hide me. May God hide you in his pavilion. May God hide you in the secret place of his tabernacle. And may the Lord set you upon a rock. Ah, in the name of Jesus. And may your head be lifted above your enemies round about you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you again that my God will hide you in his pavilion. I don't know what is trying to, to swallow you right now. May God hide you in his pavilion. May God keep you in the secret place of his tabernacle. May God set you upon, upon a rock and may your head be lifted above your enemies round about you. In the name of Jesus, may God lift you up. May God lift up your head. In the name of Jesus, may God give you new songs, songs of praises. In the name of Jesus, when in storm, people look everywhere except God. Why do people lose hope? During stormy periods, during the time of storms, People look elsewhere except God. In Job 8.13, it said, Those who forget God have no hope. They are like rushes without any man to grow or grass without water to keep them alive. Suddenly it begins to wither, even before it is caught. Amen? <laughs> they say, oh, if only I can get a boyfriend. If only I can get another job. If only I can, I can, uh, I, I can, I can travel and relocate to this place. You see, people lose hope. People, they don't make it because they're looking for something to grasp to accept God. 
You need to grab God. The further away we get from God and his word, the less hopeful we become. But the closer we get to God, the closer you are to God, the more hopeful you are. The more hope grows in you, the most hopeful people on the earth, they're those who are closer to God. I pray to God for intimacy between you and God. Don't let whatever you are going through cause you to shift your focus and begin to grab so what will not hold you. God said they are him to the sense his stands can never hold water. This is a time for you to have a good grip on God, a good grip on his word. Amen. When you have a grip on God, intimacy in God, there is a supernatural closeness that, 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 that transmits supernatural boldness into you that in the face of trial, you are able to stand boldly. I want you to look at the possibilities and not limitations from today. What are you looking at? From today, begin to look at possibilities. Hopeful people always look beyond the physical. And I'm sending to, I'm saying to you today, look beyond the physical. Look beyond what you are seeing right now. Look at the possibilities. Not look at limitations. When things did not make sense in the physical with Abraham, he looked beyond the physical. He looks under the promises of God. The word of God is a word of hope. God is a God of hope. Hallelujah. Ero basakaya. In Romans 4, 18 to 21, said there was no hope. The new century version. There was no hope that Abraham would have children. But Abraham believed God and continued hoping. So he became the father of many nations. There was no hope that Abraham would have children. Naturally speaking, there was no hope. It means Logically speaking, there was no hope. Physiological, anatomically, medically speaking, there was no hope. Hallelujah. But Abraham believed God and continued hoping. Hallelujah. So hopeful people, they don't put their hope and trust in things, in natural things. They put their hope and trust in God. Hallelujah. And the word of God. That's why hope is not positive thinking. Hope is not optimism. You need to be up to be an optim optimist. You need optimism is very important. Amen. You need to be positive in your thinking. But being hopeful goes beyond that. Optimism says it's not bad as you think. But hope says, in fact, things are really, really, really bad. But I confidently believe it is going to turn out well by the assurance from God's word. That's the difference. The strength of hope is to believe in the reality and the promises of God. So Abraham wasn't just going around, you know what, I trust myself. Uh, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That wasn't what happened to Abraham. In verse 20 says, he never doubted that God would keep his promise. Hallelujah. And he never stopped believing. He grew stronger and stronger in faith and gave glory to God. Abraham was sure that God was able to do what he had promised. So Abraham's hope was in God's word. Where is your hope today? Are you putting your hope in your hope? Are you putting your hope in your strength? Are you putting your hope in your own ability? But I want to challenge you. Put your hope in the word of God. Put your hope in the ability of God. Put your hope in the faithfulness of God. Put your hope in the validity and veracity of God's word. God can't fail you. God will never fail. God has never failed. And I can assure you, he will not fail you. Over that matter, God won't fail. You, will not, you won't fail. Over that issue, God will never lose. You will not lose. As you are trusting him, God is victorious always. You are victorious always. As we are menacing this week, I am victorious you are victorious. It's a blessed with God who gives us victory through Christ Jesus. Over that issue, as you are standing on the word of God, you have victory. Paul said in Acts 27, I guess 23, he said, Shut up, don't be afraid. I believe it shall be as God has spoken. I believe it shall be as God has spoken. I believe your healing will come forth as God has spoken. I believe the salvation of your child shall emerge as God has spoken. I believe a turn around in your business as God has spoken. I believe this is a new season for you. Not ceasing to go down. It's a season to go up as God has spoken. I believe it is your season of wholeness and wellness. Amen. As God has spoken. Glory be to God. Real hope is based on God's word and not on human wishes. When I put my hope in my emotions and talent and friends and intelligence, 
it is wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. And that can't sustain you. But hope is when it's based on God's word and what God has spoken. Biblical hope. Amen. It's based on the fact that God cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19. God can never lie. What God says, God does. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Ah, because God cannot lie, his word will come to pass in your life. I'm not asking you to live in denial. I'm asking you to stand upon the veracity, the validity of God's word, unchangingness of God. God cannot change. He came to Abraham in Hebrews 6, 13 to 19. He couldn't look for him. He couldn't find anything to swore with. He swore with his word, with his own word and himself. Hallelujah. And God has given you himself and his word. Two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Oh, Shalaba, are you basing your hope on God's word? You are standing on a rock that cannot be moved. You are standing on a rock that cannot be moved. You are standing on an unchanging rock, a rock that can never change, a rock that can sustain you and carry you. Today, whoever on this platform, your hope is in Jehovah God. Whatever you are hoping on, I declare to you, your hope will never, never be put to shame. You will never, never experience shame. It shall be glory all the way in the name of Jesus. Always pray and never lose hope. Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, he said, men, in the new century version, Jesus said a story to them. He said, men should always pray and never lose hope. The new century version. Always pray and never lose hope. Always pray and never lose hope. Those Two alternatives are your choices in life. You either pray or you lose hope. You either pray or you lose hope. You pray for strength to endure until your change comes. I pray for somebody today. May God give you strength to endure until the change you are expecting comes to pass. Pray against opposition to your expectation. Today, every opposition to your expectation, I rebuke those opposition oppositions in the name of Jesus. I pray that the blockage, the, the hindrance to your new season be removed forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, zero Messiah. I pray for favor with God and with man in the name of Jesus. Hero Bashaka Pali Nasoya. Arana Kato Roboko Sike Tele Reboroko Toli Rabara Nakatale Reboza. I think I've shared this testimony with you. I'm going to share it and I'll pray for you. You know, there was this man who, who, his business was going so well. The man became so rich. And at a point, the business started going down. Started getting bad and bad. I was losing business, losing business. And he was gradually becoming an ex-rich man. And people were calling him the ex-rich man. You know that your friend there, who used to be rich? And nothing rich people hate than to be called ex-rich man. Couldn't go to the same circle that he used to go. Couldn't go to the same club where he used to go. Don't have the right same people hanging around him. He became discouraged and depressed. And, and, and he hated that situation so badly. He decided to commit suicide. So he wrote a suicide note, amen, and left it at home for his wife. And he drove to a certain part of town and parked his car left the car there, and he began to walk by the side street. Amen. And he was on his way to go and commit the suicide. He was going to jump into the, uh, to the, to the sea, I mean, the, the, the sea that, uh, uh, by the asket of town. While he was going, while he was going to do this, a madman met him. A madman, an insane man, met him and started speaking while following him. Come, come and see divine setup. This madman started to follow him, but why follow him? He started speaking. He said, Some people are really, really mad because they have food to eat, cars to drive, they are not satisfied, and they want to commit suicide. Can you see how God can go to any lane to save you? He said, Some people are really, really mad. They have food to eat, they have house to live in, they even have cars to drive, but they still want to commit suicide. They must be really, really mad. He kept saying it, kept saying it, until he became a nuisance to this man. Finally, this man got the message and ran back to his vehicle, broke down in tears, 
and apologized to God and ran back home and apologized to his wife. Amen. Don't ever lose hope. That man only lost, what that man lost was his hope. Because if the hope is in God, there's nothing lost that God cannot bring back. In fact, God will not only bring back, he will bring back double. That was one thing that kept Job. Job lost all, but he never lost hope in God. He lost all, but not his hope. Where are you today? Don't lose hope, especially in your Jehovah God. Your God is able to say, ah, is there a hope of a tree if it's cut down? Amen. Will he come back alive again? Yes. At the signs of water, he shall come back and begin to board. I see your destiny coming back. I see that business springing back forth life. I see that relationship springing back forth life. I see joy coming out of, of a damn relationship. I see peace coming out of your home. I see Rosa. I see turn around coming upon you in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your voice and say, My soul, you shall not be disquieted with me. Hope in God. I receive strength to be hopeful. I receive grace to be hopeful in the pursuit of journey of life. I receive strength to pursue life. I receive grace to pursue life. I receive the connectivity in life. Life. I receive the favor with God with men in the name of Jesus. Open the doors, open for me. This is not the end of the journey. This is the beginning of a new day. This is the beginning of a new day. This is a new dawn for me. It's not over yet. It is a new dawn. I step into new territories. I embrace opportunities. I embrace new dawn. I embrace new opportunities. I move forward in the name of Jesus. David encouraged himself and the Lord is God. Come on, say in the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen me emotionally. I receive strength spiritually. I receive mental strength. I receive emotional strength. I receive spiritual strength to pursue destiny, to pursue the journey of life in the name of Jesus. Zero mazagadale rabosa. Make yourself a refresher of others. Not ignites your hope like when you give hope to others. Proverbs 11.25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. The doctrine of me, myself, and I is a killer of hope. Today, make up your mind to be a hope giver. Make up your mind to be a refresher of others. As you do so, your hope will begin to rise up. I pray for you right now. He said, when they move from nation to nation, from one nation to another nation, Psalm 105, verse 13 to 15, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them evil. He rebuked king for their sake. He said, to touch not my anointed and do my prophet know how. As you go from places to places in fulfilling destiny, today, this week, this month, for the rest of this year, my God will restrain and forbid anyone from doing you evil in the name of Jesus as you go from one place to another to fulfill destiny. My God, we restrain, we forbid anyone or anything from doing you evil in the name of Jesus. The anointing of do not touch by evil rests upon you right now. The anointing of do not touch by evil rests upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Zero by Sia Carosa. Genesis 35 verse 5. As they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob, Marina, Sire. As they go journey into the journey to their promised land, God's terror was upon the cities around and they couldn't do them any evil. Today I pray that the wall of impenetrable, a wall that is impenetrable by sickness, by darkness, by any form of affliction, we surround you, we surround our household, we surround our children, may divine wall that is impenetrable, supernatural presence of God will be upon you, will be around you, will be around your household, that darkness can penetrate, sickness can penetrate, suffering can penetrate, in the mighty name of Jesus, John 17 verse 4, I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work which you give me to do. By the reasons of the manifestations 
of God in the life of Jesus. Jesus look up and say, Father, look at it. I have finished the work you gave me to do. I glorify you. I pray today by manifestations, not just by confessions. Your destiny will bring glory to God on the earth. You will finish the work. You will finish the work. I will finish the work. Grace to finish the work. Grace to fulfill assignment. Grace to complete assignment. Rest upon you. Rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. No shame. No shame. No shame. But glory all the way. Glory all the way. Glory all the way. No destiny will bring shame. The vehicle of your destiny will never break down. In the name of Jesus. The vehicle of our destinies will not break down. It shall mount up with wings as the eagles in the name of Jesus the wheel of progress of my destiny of your destiny will never break down the wheel of progress of my destiny of your destiny will never break down we never suffer any form of demotion regression but we shall flourish we shall move from glory to glory in the name of Jesus zero makala barokati abaskali abrona sikaya you are blessed, 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 you are blessed. May your hope come alive forever in the name of Jesus. Come and say, I will never lose hope. Say, come and say, in the name of Jesus, I will never lose hope. Nothing will steal my hope. I will hope in God now and forever. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Don't forget, next week is our communion day. So get ready and prepare for that. We're still in the fasting and prayer for this week. And don't forget, tonight we're going to pray again for 30 minutes on this platform. And until then, it's going to be Saturday. My God, my God. It's going to be on Saturday. And you know what that means, the Global Marathon and Miracle Service. God of signs and wonders. The God of signs and wonders. Get ready to be a sign and to be a wonder to your generation. Of course, tomorrow night, my son, Minister Manny, will be on this platform to minister on the Youth Power Hour. It's going to be a great week. It's already a great week. Great week. It's going to get greater and greater and greater and greater and greater. And stay in a place of hope so that you can embrace the new seasons that God has for you. May God bless you. May God keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Every time we hear from you, shall be good news. And every time you hear from us, it shall be good news. Mm-hmm.